Will you pray with me? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our minds and hearts as we gather to worship you here today, may it all be acceptable and even pleasing to you, for you are our strength and our salvation. Amen. I don't know for sure that this is true, but the early Dutch explorers of this area of the world reported that several First Nations peoples of the Northeast had childhood rituals of rolling their babies in the new fallen snow and even bathing them kind of ritually each morning in local rivers and streams every single day for the first two years of their lives. I'm thinking they might have had to break the ice in the Housatonic to make that possible. Considering the Europeans of that time had, um, well, they were known to bathe regularly also, but more like once a year instead of every day. Um, they probably had no right to judge these particular hygiene practices, but instead they wrote about it with admiration, appreciating the way these First Nations people built up the strength of their children. They still didn't imitate that particular form of parenting. And I just mentioned that tidbit of American history to point out that in today's scripture text, Paul isn't writing to the Romans to encourage them to go looking for new and interesting ways to suffer just for the sake of toughening themselves up as new Christians. And he certainly isn't urging us to inflict suffering on ourselves or our children today to develop spiritual muscles. In fact, many of us have seen how emotional or physical suffering has caused very real harm to people, people we love. We can see how a crisis or even chronic pain can lead to serious mental health problems, to addiction, to depression, so suffering on its own does not uh, guarantee spiritual growth. Paul instead, though, in this passage, points to God's love as the secret sauce that makes a big difference. My Confirmation Bible translation, the Old Revised Standard, would put this passage this way. We rejoice in our sufferings knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which has been given to us. As a sixth grader reading that Confirmation Bible, I did not hear that passage as good news. I did not welcome pain and suffering. In fact, I avoided at that time in my life nearly everything athletic, preferring instead to wear my fingers out practicing the piano this time. A little less exertion. But I did learn a lot about that passage from my paternal grandmother who could quote it from her memory because she knew something about suffering having lived it herself. She had suffered the death of her mother out on the prairie when she was just nine. She lost her very best high school friend to the 1918 influenza epidemic. And she had raised two children on a mill worker's salary through the Great Depression in Appalachia. But I was grateful to her because she was my best faith teacher in this world. She always encouraged me, even as a small child, to wrestle hard with scripture. 
And she encouraged me to resist the idea that some people might espouse that this passage implies that our God of love somehow inflicts pain and suffering on us for our own good, or worse, for our punishment. And that was especially important to me because I suffered my first truly unfair loss when I was just five and my baby brother died. And it was my grandmother who helped me get through that grief and remind me to pray and to feel God's arms of comfort uplifting me and holding me. And that was so important because there were other well-meaning adults, many even at church, who would, you know, quote platitudes to my grieving mother and say, well, it was God's will, or God just needed another little angel in heaven. But I would fight back to that, refusing to believe in a God who would kill a child in order to teach an important lesson to the rest of us. Christian church, I'm afraid, has a bad reputation for glorifying pain and suffering. Instead of teaching us to move through it with God's help. Fans of um, blood atonement theology have so lifted up pain and suffering that when I was doing work with domestic violence survivors, we heard from people that they were told by their pastor or priest that they should rejoice that they were being beaten up by their husbands because they got to share the suffering of Christ. And to hear the way the blood of Christ is, is celebrated in some circles, it's almost um, as, I hate to ruin it for you, Gordon will ruin it for you later if you come, but you would almost wonder why Judas isn't lifted up as a saint if it was so important that God personally murder his only child. Instead, the model for God that, that Paul is actually lifting up is a God with us, Christ Emmanuel, one who knows our suffering because God the Father lost a beloved only son and knows our pain. So in caring for our children, as we were preparing for Children's Sunday with such a heavy text, we had to be careful. We worked hard on that translation as a group. We wanted to make sure we weren't inadvertently planting this kind of toxic suffering theology in them. And it seemed especially important in this world that they have to live in, where we just had another tragic elementary school shooting, where our kids have lost so much of their short lives to the COVID epidemic, even if they didn't, even if they weren't among the hundreds of thousands of children who have lost a primary caregiver or a parent from death, they lost proms, they lost swim parties, they lost all kinds of camp activities that they might have had, not to mention education in a classroom. Our children, whether they, whether we inflicted it on them or not, have gone through a hard time. So in that light, I was seeing this passage as a great gift to our children as it was to me as a child just as it was to the Romans so long ago, because it teaches them, it reminds them that God doesn't afflict us with every kind of difficulty and tragedy the way Zeus does from mighty Olympus, testing his people or hurling lightning bolts from Olympus. But instead, our God is earthbound here with us, God in flesh, the reliable one, our constant friend and savior who comes rushing in to help us in times of trouble, who comes to set us free from the fears and anxieties and griefs that bind us up and calls us to new lives of joy and faithfulness. And I think this was what Paul was doing, writing to the Roman church, beginning to be persecuted under Caesar, 
he was reminding them on this first Sunday after Pentecost, this is a great text, that on Pentecost, the Holy Spirit that is poured out upon the church is a power worth holding on to and celebrating. The power of God's love in Christ's church is more powerful than any pain this earth can inflict. I invite you to think about your own lives and ask around. I was so grateful for the women's fellowship who shared story after story with me on Saturday morning about times in their lives when they thought things were the darkest, when a new pathway opened up or a new knowledge or a new friend came into their lives in that hard time. But the term holy hindsight also came up. It's so hard to see any meaning in our suffering when we're neck deep in it. But with time and with the help of God and our neighbors, we can move through it. So I wanted to close with um, some sharings that our children have given us. Because we have this arrogance of thinking we need to teach them everything about God. And often they, you, our Sunday school teachers know it, they have much to teach us. I learned from one child who had grown up in my church who at about age seven had to, um, I was there as the pastor to pray with the family as they checked the beloved grandmother into skilled nursing. And it was a sad day. But after we prayed together, we held hands and prayed for her new home and blessed it. The child turned to his mother and said, wow, mommy, now I know why Pastor Bryn needs to pray because we really needed it today. But the light bulb goes on. Wendy Elson was sharing that one of the, I think it was Wendy, was it you, Sarah, who said uh, in the teacher luncheon yesterday that one of the children said that um, when we don't, what does it say? When, we're, when everything is happy and good, sometimes we forget about God. But when we're sad, we remember to pray. It is true. I also heard about another little girl who was only about eight and had gone through an early divorce from her father, but also her mother had gone through two kind of sad breakups and endings to relationships that had seemed to be promising for the future. But with her mother's help and with their faith, she was able to give her tools to cope with such early loss. Her Girl Scout, the little girl's Girl Scout leader, reported to the mom after their first camp out, their first overnight in the dark, when some of the other little girls were afraid of the noises and the new experience. This little girl's sage advice to her fellow campers was this, quoted straight, of course, from the mom's mouth. When you feel afraid, you just need to trust in your heart that everything will be okay. If you want to have warmth in your heart, then think about your mom and your dad and all the good things they do for you. And you will have warmth in your heart again. And I love that at the ending when she got home from that scary camp out, she climbed into bed with her mother and said, I just need to cuddle with you for just a minute to get back the warmth in my heart. <laughs> we see, whether we're old or whether you're young, that everyone has the power to preach and to learn the good news of God's strong and steadfast love. But unlike Paul, only sometimes do we need to write it down in words in a letter. Most of the time, we can do it just when we pass the peace to our neighbors. Thanks be to God for this good news. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Children's Sunday at the Congregational Church of Brookfield. And we want you to know that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, that you are welcome here with us. Um, I also wanted to make sure that we point out a few of the announcements that you'll see in your bulletin. One is almost like a Where's Waldo announcement. If you notice, Jennifer Whipple's name is not mentioned anywhere in this bulletin. And that's not because she's sick, it's because she's celebrating the confirmation of her son, Braden and her nephews, her triplet nephews in Naugatuck today. So she's having to miss out on all the fun, but I didn't want you to worry uh, from the beginning because it's not Jennifer doing the announcements. All right, secondly, children are always welcome in worship, but today you are especially worship if you are a young person. You're especially welcome today because you get to help lead worship. And we're leading a couple of really fun camp songs that as our hymns today. So if you happen to know those and the hand gestures and want to spontaneously come up and help us lead it, it's just fine. Um, also today, the adults get to have their day ruined by Gordon Markowitz. Do you want to make your own announcement? Oh, please tell us how you're going to ruin our day after church. I'm Gordon Markowitz, how are you? Um, we're coming up now to the middle of June. We're getting close to vacations. School's gonna be out. We're probably not gonna be around here too much. So I'm gonna leave you with a little present for you to take. My goal it will be um, when you're laying on the beach in July and you're sitting there at the beach and you got your margarita, all of a sudden you're gonna say, WTF, what did he mean by that? Ah. So, <laughs> if you have like an extra half hour after church, uh, 11.30 or just like 15 minutes after service, uh, we'll be down in the, um, the hall downstairs and uh, I got my little short program. Thank you, Gordon. What? The, 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 yeah. They know. Um, so then the other announcements, uh, I'm not going to repeat stuff that's been in there for several weeks, but I did want to make sure you all know if you are daytime available, our Serendipers Lunch Club is renewing their um, programs, but not with a full lunch this time, but just with an ice cream social at 1 o'clock in Fellowship Hall on Tuesday. So we hope you can join us for that. Um, if you are going to come, it would be helpful to our lovely hostess, Eleanor, if you would call the church office and let us know so that we will have enough ice cream and sprinkles and so forth for you. Um, finally, next Sunday will be our Caring Ministries Sunday, where we will be recommissioning our deacons. We are decommissioning and thanking our Stephen ministers. And we are um, also sadly saying Godspeed and farewell to our very own Pete Lane, who is moving south and blessing South Carolina with, with his presence. But we will uh, miss him here and hope you can be here to bid farewell. Are there any further announcements? If not, will we have a treat for you today as our introit will be brought to you by our wonderful children's joy ringers.
Each week, as we light our peace candle, we pray for those who live in places where there is war or threats of violence, and especially the children who live in those places. So we unite our prayers with all of God's children around the world who are praying for peace, remembering the call of Jesus to each one of us to be peacemakers. We remember how he said to his followers, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be children of God. Let us pray silently as we listen to the tolling of our church bell. Please join us in our our responsive call to worship. Our Lord and ruler, your name is wonderful everywhere on earth. We see your glory within the heavens above, with praises from children and little babies. You, you have built a mighty fortress. Our songs make your enemies fall silent. We make them speech. Lord, our creator, your name is wonderful. I often think of the heavens your hands have made and the moon and stars you put in place when I ask, why do you care about us tiny humans? How can you love us so much when we are so small and weak? But you have created us, created us in your image, only a little lower than yourself. O oh Lord, our creator, your name is wonderful around the world. And you have crowned us with glory and honor. You have trusted us to take care of everything your hands have made. You gave us all the other creatures to look after. O oh Lord, our creator, your name is wonderful around the world. All the sheep and all the cattle, every wild animal, all the birds in the sky, all the fish in the ocean, in the, in the oceans, and all the creepy crawly things at the bottom of the sea. O oh oh Lord, Lord, our creator, your name is wonderful around the world. Thank you, children. Now, I, we are finally having a hymn where we're dismissing the babies to go back to the church nursery with Miss Debbie. And the rest of you, we hope you'll stay um, with your parents here for the rest of worship today. Um, I do hope you brought a mask so that you'll be able to rise and join us in singing hymn number 61, All Things Bright and Beautiful.
seated. Please join me in our unison prayer of approach. We will praise, praise you, you, loving God, for you are so good and kind, and so much stronger and smarter than we are. Thank you for providing us and protecting us. Lord, your name is sacred, because you are so great and holy. You stay busy creating so many glorious things. Thank you for sharing this beautiful world with us. From the green earth that feeds us, to the water of life. You are so amazing, all-knowing, faithful, friendly, and fun. You forgive us our sins and bless us with every kind of happiness. We thank you, Lord, for being our supreme being, but also our friend, giving us the ability to feel warm hugs, play sports, and use all of our creative gifts as a part of our church family as we follow our Savior Jesus, in whose name we pray. Now let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and glory forever. Amen. So I'd like to invite um, you, the adults who are helping me lead this um, scripture reading drama, and Time for Children to come up, and the Children who are um, here are going to sit down here on the floor. If you want to, you can watch from the back like the grown ups if you want. But this way you'll have a closer view and you can participate if you want. So today, kids, we're going to learn about a letter in the Bible. Did you know that there are letters in the Bible? No. So, Paul, the apostle, wrote a lot of letters. And so this is his letter that he wrote to the Romans. Paul was a man who lived 2,000 years ago. That's a long time. He started some of the very first Christian churches. And back then, 2,000 years ago, they did not have any of these. They could not text each other. They couldn't send emails. They had to use this thing called pen and paper to write a letter. I know it's hard to believe, but there was a time like that. And so he wrote letters to his friends in different churches throughout the ancient world to tell them about Jesus and tell them how to be a better Christian. And so we can learn a lot from those letters today. In this letter from Romans, Paul is trying to encourage Christians to rely on God's love to give them strength to get through whatever troubles they might be having. Now, I don't know about you, but I learn a lot when I see a story acted out. So that's why we're going to try um, telling this story today in actions. So we're going to invite you to um, listen quietly until the point when Miss Wendy mentions something about troubles. And then you're going to quietly come forward and help be some of the troubles because we have to continue to hear the scripture reading. Does that sound fair? We're going to do that? All right. So let's begin. Yeah. Yay. Well, some of the kids said it wasn't fair that they were cast as troubles and their pastor was cast as God. So all I'm saying is, when you write your own script, I can be trouble and you can be God. All right. So are we ready to listen and to watch? Okay, let's go. By faith, we are able to let God do what is right for us. Make us into what we were always meant to be, strong 
and fit Christians. We have it all together with God because of our great teacher, Jesus. And that's not all. We throw open the doors of our hearts to God and discover at the same moment that God has already <laughs> thrown open a great door for us. <laughs> oh, my script! You can't see that I have the whole world in my hands. <laughs> We find ourselves standing where we always hoped we might stand, out in the wide open spaces of God's grace and glory, standing tall. There's more to come. We continue to shout our praises even when we're boxed in with trouble. Praise the Lord! And Praise troubles. the Lord! And Pr more troubles! Come on, guys. What kind of trouble can you give Pete? Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Because we know how troubles can develop patience in us, how patience in turn forges a Get strong character, and character builds hope so that we can bounce back <laughs> and be alert and ready for whatever comes our way next. <laughs> then whatever happens, we can trust that we will all be okay because we know how much God has poured into our lives through the Holy Spirit. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Yay! So we're going to ask you kids to sit down and talk about the story a little bit with Miss Barbara. I turned it off. All right, could I have that Holy Spirit? I might need it in this time for children. Let's put the Holy Spirit back in our jar. Was that fun? Yeah. It was fun being a little bit of trouble, huh? All right, so what happened? We didn't want to be on the floor anymore? Aw, thanks, guys. All right, so what did you see or hear or learn from that amazing acting of Mr. <laughs> Pete? And Pastor Bryn, who heard or learned? Anyone want to share? Joel, what did you learn or see? Here, you want to hold? God always loves us no matter what. Oh, did we hear that? He said, God always loves us no matter what. Cole had something. Okay. Oh, Cole, did you learn something? What did you learn? Trouble comes in an Amazon box. <laughs> <laughs> so technically that was Luke's response <laughs> and my son took it but that's okay we share he, he's gonna learn a new word upstaging <laughs> you can learn about that later so that was Luke's awesome line and we found that very funny and we thought everyone would laugh by that what did you learn um, God always loves us yeah. yes How about you? That we should always be thankful that God loves us even when we come into trouble. Yes. Aww. Okay. Lily, I saw your hand before. Did you have something to say? In um, what I thought about the story is, in life, we will always have problems, but God will always come to um, come to help us out, and so we'll we'll be able to bounce back. Did you have something too, Henry? Wow, we, we're on the ball here today, guys. Um, God and Jesus always loves us no matter what thing we do. That's, That's right. Very true, Henry. Amen. God forgives us even when we make trouble. <laughs> I think it's the magic of the microphone. It is. It's great. Okay, well, thank you for that. Uh, 
So if you all, if those of you who want to help me lead the middle song, so you can join me up here. Help. So we're going to lead into a little song. We have some helpers who want to join us, and then those that don't want to join us can uh, sit down and be in the seats over there with Miss Sarah. So the outdoor worship service and campfires, we've often sung this song. It's Peace Like a River. But I thought it's probably worth doing a quick review of the hand motions because you adults are going to want to know the hand motions, even if you might hit each other as you do them. We're, it's about peace, though, so we ask that you try to not do that. So we have peace like a river, peace like a river, and you show us how it flows. It flows like a river. And then the next verse is, we, um, we have joy like a fountain. So we have joy like a fountain. <laughs> and it springs like a fountain. Then the next verse, we have love like the ocean. We have love like the ocean. And it swells like the ocean. And then the last verse, you get to put them all together. And I hope you've had your coffee. You ready? done children. So this is the time in our service that we spend to share a few of our joys and concerns for reasons of prayer. We are going to keep it a little shorter than perhaps in the past. Um, we've been praying for the world quite a bit in these days as there have been so many mass shootings as well as the war in Ukraine. But there are refugees and people who have been displaced, including children all around the world that we are praying for. So I'd invite your prayers to continue for our refugee resettlement ministry that we'll be able to get that started again here soon. We're praying for a few families who are grieving on this day, especially um, Patty and her family who are celebrating the life of her mother Barbara here in this sanctuary this afternoon at 1.30. And also we got word um, that Diane and Frank's family is grieving the very sudden loss of their 66-year-old brother-in-law, Bill, in North Carolina last week. 
we continue to play, pray for several who have loved ones in hospice care, like uh, Barbara's Aunt Phyllis and Jerry's brother Roddy and Bob's sister Janet. I do have a good report from our dear friend Lillian, who at 100 years old is officially in hospice care, but is looking very good and enjoying life and would welcome a visit if you'd like to get to know her. Um, fun fact, kids, Miss Lillian was in kindergarten and was five years old when they flooded and made Candlewood Lake. So, she has stories. So we continue um, to also pray for some who are um, struggling in various other ways, including our own Amanda, who would have been here to lead the call to worship, except she has COVID. So um, we pray for her and several others who um, are sick on this day, and some who are undergoing medical testing and awaiting test results. We got um, a thank you from our dear friend Jeannie, who's just finished her chemotherapy and wanted to let everybody know how much she appreciates our prayers and continued prayers, as she has um, several tests coming up, along with our friend Kim and um, Deirdre and um, Tim and uh, several others. Um, we have much to celebrate. Who here was at the sock hop last night? Yes, this is a church that knows how to have fun. So um, thanks to all on Fellowship and the Morrisons gang who made that possible. Um, we also are lifting up prayers of joy for Jennifer and her family, um, having this confirmation for Braden, along with JJ, Jeffrey, and Jack in Naugatuck. And also um, Jane Moran, who um, is a youth of our church, who is now an ordained minister, she has been accepted as a chaplain now with the U.S. Army Reserve and will be doing that duty on a, in addition to her associate pastor role uh, in Reading. And um, we also received word that um, Jeslyn is graduating from Danbury High School but was unable to come for baccalaureate last week because she was attending her younger brother's first Holy Communion. So Aiden has a celebration as well in his life. And then finally, a great prayer of thanksgiving and gratitude for our wonderful church school program and all of our great <laughs> teachers and kids at the end of a church school year. So um, I would invite you to um, close with a word of prayer. Holy One, we are grateful for the great outpouring of your love upon this world. We confess that in our brokenness and with all the troubles that we have and will have, we need you now more than ever. So thank you for your promise to be with us always, in this life and in the next, even until the end of time. We thank you for the amazing gift of all of our children and grandchildren and all the young people who are coming into this world and this faith with such hope. And we pray for your blessing on them today, as well as upon all of our teachers and mentors and youth leaders and those who guide us in your way of faith. Walk with us closely and help us to call upon you when we are in need with the certain knowledge that you are our Savior and will come running. In Christ's name we thank you. Amen. So, Barbara has a moment of appreciation, I believe, for our teachers today. I hope you guys are enjoying the service so far. Are our kids wonderful or what? So I just wanted to take some time to actually recognize our amazing teachers that helped put this whole year together and deal with me for a whole year and all my weird ideas that I come up with and somehow it comes out awesome. So I'm going to invite the teachers up. Um, we had a teacher appreciation luncheon yesterday, and it was catered by Janine Hanowitz. And I got to say, that lady knows how to put on a, a, a show. Woo! And the food was awesome. So some of them already got their gifts. There were some that could not come yesterday. So we do have some thank you gifts for our teachers, our teacher helpers, and our junior kid helpers that come in, because there takes a lot to get our church school program going every single morning. Okay, so the first one I'll start with is Miss Sarah. You have to come up here, yes. Sarah Dykes, she is our preschool teacher. Little stinky Mira, yes. See, I mean, look at that. What kid does not want to go to preschool class? 
<laughs> and we have learned food is a very good motivator in church school. Um, Pete Lane, come on, Mr. Pete. <laughs> Pete does our, um, our first through third classroom, so you can understand how much fun that must be when he pulls out his vanilla swirl tactics. And then lastly is our amazing Miss Wendy. Miss Wendy is the upper kids four through, four through, it says six, but technically it's like four through nine some days because the children always wanna come back and either help out or have fun or just eat snacks with Miss Wendy. Um, and by any chance, is Mrs. Miss Mama T, are you here? I didn't know if she was gonna make it or not. Okay, Mama T, or Kathy Taylor, she is also, she did Pete's position in the first half of the year, and then she had to take some time for herself for the second half. So she was someone else I wanted to make sure we thank. Um, I'm gonna ask for, um, all of them got their gifts yesterday. So, sure. All right, so I wanted to also take some thank yous for our classroom helpers. So we, um, the adult classroom helpers, I can't go a whole year without saying thank you to Miss Jillian. So Jillian, if you could, if you just want to stand there, you can just stand there. Here, could you go bring this to Miss Jillian? Good, she's right there. Could you stand up so that Miss Mira could bring you your gift? So Miss Jillian steps in for all the times when I say, oh my God, I'm either short a teacher because a teacher has COVID or a teacher is having something at home, or I say, I have a crazy service project, Miss Jillian, could you help me put it together? And Jillian is there. As you saw, she just came in and stepped in for Amanda and was able to play bells like an amazing lady that she is. So thank you so much for your help, Jillian. All right, this one, oh, and the last two, Michelle Ostrom and Caitlin, uh, I always say the last name wrong, Dungus, they are also our teacher helpers. They are both away. Um, so I wanted to thank our kids. This gift is for Luke Chirizo. Luke, could you bring it right over to Luke? Our kids, as they move up, end up coming down to help out at all different uh, classrooms. So I just want to say a little thank you to Luke. He comes and either plays with the guys and just makes sure that they feel comfortable and uh, just helps teach. So that was very nice. This one is for Miss Ashley Colombo, which we could never do anything without. She always, Ashley, could you stand up? Do you want to see that it helps? All right. Is Sasha here? Aw. Our last one was for Miss Sasha. Miss Sasha Acosta. She's not here, but do you want to bring it to her sisters? Yeah. So you see how. Do you see how funny? Could you bring this over? To so that is for Sasha. She comes back as well with Ashley and the two double team up and help us uh, entertain and play with our children. Okay. I got so many helpers. All right, but unfortunately we're done now, okay? No more gifts. No more gifts. Oh, I know it's fun giving gifts to everyone. All right, so I just want to say thank you for all of the wonderful uh, uh, time and dedication from our teachers. It couldn't be done without you. And we couldn't have done it without you, Barbara. Thank you. I, Jen said this about you, Barbara, yesterday, but everybody needs to hear it because Barbara just has so stepped up to the plate as our church school coordinator, a trained educator. She claims to know nothing about the Bible, which is not true. And she's actually written some amazing and creative curriculum for our kids and has gone through CE certification training with our conference and racial justice training and safe boundaries with children training and all kinds of great stuff. So we really are so blessed to have a professional of your caliber running our church school program. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So we're going to close with a favorite hymn of mine and maybe yours too. And I don't think I need to teach you the hand gestures for this little light of mine, but if any of you kids want to come up and help me lead it, we can do that. Are you ready? Miss, um, it is in the hymnal, but I wouldn't advise you look at it because Miss, Miss um, Tony has different words. So we're going to go with this. Ready?
blow out the light of Christ that, that burns so brightly in you. Share the peace of Christ, the love of Christ, and the joy of Christ with everyone you meet everywhere you go. Amen. So let us go out into... I forgot! I'm so sorry! I upstaged them! So that's what upstage means. It's when you take somebody else's part. I'm so sorry! May God, our creator, whose name is wonderful around the world, bless you and keep you in strong arms of love and give you peace. And let us share the peace of Christ with everyone we meet.